the internet a few months after started to come to Syria mm -hmm. but it was only in a couple of official places so there was only two public places or cafes quote unquote where you can access the internet so I used to go there but I was so short so little that they had to get me a stool so I can reach the keyboard no and mouse <laughs> So you're up there like perched on so this like, stool. Yeah. <laughs> so like you that. can reach oh my goodness. So reach out my keyboard and mouse and uh and my internet uh journey started there. Yeah. Because it opened my eyes at that point to talk to so many people. We use chat room, like I use chatting all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learn how to code. That's how I learn oh, more wow. about computers actually, through chat rooms. Through chat rooms? Yeah. Specifically through IRC. That's so interesting. Yeah. I guess, I think in my head I was imagining you and like maybe your cousin helping you out sometimes, but you're just kind of like learning it. But really, it seems like there was a lot of like people like in like your brother and your cousin, but also like on the internet who were kind of helping you out. Absolutely. So my, my cousin helped me out how to use a computer yeah. right he helped me out kind of what how the he, he told me he gave me like a, an idea on how the internet will kind of work you would go to a website so this is like an offline page and things like that mm -hmm. there's no coding for example uh, he yeah. never taught me anything like that yeah. well, there was no youtube really there mm -hmm. was no like it was early we're talking about year 2000 right so the internet looked much different than what it is today mm -hmm. And again, super slow dial-up internet that we had at the time. So I learned how to code through um, talking to people. Wow. And uh, one thing led to another. So first thing that I've done next to the internet cafe was uh, fixing computers for other mm -hmm. people, of course. That was kind of getting an easy one of how much I troubleshoot the computers that I have. Yeah. You're like, I spend a lot of time fixing my own computer. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I can help these other people. Yeah, so I started like services started to increase one piece at a time. So one maintenance for other computers, selling computers, like getting the p parts because you cannot go. There are no companies to go buy computers from as one piece. Yeah. Just buy components and kind of put it together. Then I made actually a few shops for people. So oh, wow. I put their computers and I put their networks together. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that was that was kind of OK. Now we're getting serious. Yeah. But the big thing really, and the thing that I kind of think it's kind of the best software I ever wrote mm -hmm. was I wrote software that I can bypass the Syrian proxy at a time. This feels like another one of those gray areas. It was <laughs> a little bit to the darker side, I would say. <laughs> a, little further, a little further down, yes. okay. <laughs> so basically, yeah, I wrote this piece of software mm -hmm. that I had to work on with a few friends all over the mm -hmm. world and to be able to uh, allow the, my customers to open their email addresses mm -hmm. because the government shut down any email address that oh, does wow. not end up with the government official mm -hmm. um, domain, basically. So any company that... So no one could check their email. So nobody can check their email. And they keep blocking, like, so people would go sign up for a new email services, like every mm -hmm. now and then there's mm -hmm. a new email provider, you would yeah. go sign up for it. In five weeks, six weeks it's max, it's blocked. Oh man. So you keep changing emails and changing emails. Forget about Yahoo or Hotmail at the time, they were like totally blocked. Yeah. So everything started, because like the blocking started to get really more intense. Mm -hmm. So we, I, we needed a way out. Yeah and i did that so i had enabled my customers to open this mm -hmm. and it was funny it was there were two people in the country who could do that it was me i was almost 16. The yeah i was gonna ask how old you were yeah still 16. oh my goodness and another guy that i actually never met i just knew from the you know the forums and things like that and yeah. we we're both using aliases 
but yeah. you can tell like there's only two people in this country who are doing this you and another guy okay sounds cool <laughs> and you were 16 yeah that's crazy yeah <laughs> wow it is it is actually a lot of fun because when you're 16 and you have that like oh i did something important right so yeah it was a really enjoyable moment i'm not gonna deny it yeah i believe it yeah made wow, some money out that. of it <laughs> <laughs> nice.